What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about top five rods that every bass fisherman needs in their arsenal. But first, something super cool for you guys. Matt and I are really excited to extend this offer to you guys. The guys and gals at Tackle Warehouse reached out to us and they are giving us a $20 discount code for any purchase over $100 for the next week. So down below in the video description, the very top link, if you click it, that $20 off coupon code will automatically be applied to your next purchase over $100. So super cool. It's always good when you can save money. It's even better when you can save money when you're buying things that you truly love. Super cool. Thank you guys at Tackle Warehouse. So I'm gonna set the camera up. Let's talk about the top five rods that you need to have in your arsenal. Hopefully you guys take advantage of that discount code. It's super cool. Again, thanks Tackle Warehouse for reaching out to us and extending that opportunity to us and our subscribers. So uh, take advantage of that guys. Today's video is a video that we get, or at least partly, uh, we get questions about all the time. You know, In fact, last night I answered three different Facebook messages about which rod to get for which technique. So it's something that Matt and I do all the time. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get to all of them because we have so many different platforms. And uh, I mean, we get hundreds a day on across the different platforms, questions and stuff. But one of the most often asked questions is which rod should I buy? So depending on where you are in your arsenal, it doesn't matter if you're buying your first rod or you're buying your 15th rod, Today's video should help you uh, hopefully fill in those patches, uh, the holes in your arsenal where you might need to, um, to add a rod or two. And then for you beginner fishermen, you know, where do you start? You know, you go online or you go into your local tackle shop, you know, there are probably 25 to hundreds of rods in rod racks sitting there in front of you for you to play with and uh, where do you start? So hopefully this video will help you. I think it will. It'll at least get you pointed in the right directions. And heck, after this video, maybe you could save 20 bucks off of your next rod purchase. So one thing that is super important and when I'm describing rods or talking about rods, sometimes I kind of intermittently uh, change or talk about action and power kind of in the same uh, sentence, but really they are two completely different things. So when you are looking at a rod, there is the action, which is how fast the rod bends, tapers down from the tip section to the handle, right? So an extra fast is gonna be really tippy and then a moderate fast is gonna bend slower in the tip, farther down into the rod blank. Those are gonna be your topwater rods, your treble hook bait rods, your crank bait rods. So that is action. Now power is just basically how strong they are, how heavy of baits they can throw. You know, is it a one power rod or a five power rod? Or in a lot of cases, is it a medium power rod or a heavy power rod. So power and action are two very important things to understand when you're buying fishing rods. Now, with that said, I have five different models for you. Now, when I was sitting trying to pick out the different uh, rods for this video, you know, I went way back to the very beginning when I was just getting into bass fishing in, uh, in junior high, elementary school, I was fishing ponds, fishing some lakes, uh, and I needed a one rod that I could do a lot of different techniques with. You know, I needed a rod that I could throw light top waters on, light swim baits. They weren't that big of a deal back then, kind of dating myself. Um, Texas rigs, you know, your lizards, your uh, brush hogs, your weightless Senkos. You know, I needed an ultra universal rod. Now, it's important to understand that as a bass fisherman, 
as you progress through your career, your fishing career, and you're building your arsenal, you're gonna get more and more technique specific rods uh, and kind of go away from the do all rods, the universal rods. Um, but to start out, my number one rod, uh, if you're a, an advanced fisherman or a guy that's just getting into bass fishing and you need a rod that can do a lot of different things, it's gonna be this guy right here. Now it doesn't matter the brand, or the price point. Down below in the video description, I'll link different recommendations at a budget combo, mid-price combo, and then a high-end combo, because people have different jobs, right? They have disposable income, or maybe they're on a budget. All people are different when they're buying fishing rods, so uh, we have a lot of friends that's like, hey, I don't know what I need to buy, just tell me. I don't care about the price, just tell me which rod I need. So we're gonna leave rods at different price points hopefully that will touch for all the different um, guys watching this video. So, a seven foot to seven foot medium power rod. You can go with a fast action or a extra fast action. That's totally up to you, but the power is what is important. Medium, like I said, I mean, this is, this is my six year old's rod. I have him tied, I have some braid to leader tied uh, and a little whopper plopper. You know, it is that do all rod. It's a rod that you can take uh, with you in your backpack as you're hiking, fishing shoreline or out on the pond or, or even in a, in a 20 foot bass boat. And you need to have a universal rod that seven foot medium power can do a lot of things. It can throw your light Texas rigs. It can throw your light top waters. It can throw your a little bit heavier finesse techniques. You know, your Nico rigs, your five or six inch shaky heads, uh, light Texas rigs, all that sort of stuff can be done with this rod right here. Now, with that said, we've discussed this for years. We've mentioned it for years. Any of these combos, the number one thing you can do to increase sensitivity is switch your line to braid. Not straight braid, you're gonna use braid to a leader, either fluorocarbon or monofilament, but that is gonna make a less expensive, less sensitive rod feel more sensitive, if that makes sense. So that is my number one rod. Out of all five, you have to have some kind of universal rod. And I, to this day, even though I have quite a few rods, a lot of very, very technique specific rods. You know, I'll have a drop shot rod and then I'll have a, a frog rod and then I'll have a punch rod and then I'll have a float and fly rod. You know, you start building that arsenal, but I always have at least one or two universal spinning rods. The reason I went with spinning, obviously you're not dealing with a bait caster. You don't have to worry about backlashes. Um, but if you are a guy that it already is comfortable throwing a uh, bait caster and not worrying about backlashes, that is gonna be my number two recommend, uh, recommendation. This guy right here, this is a seven, I'm not gonna talk about specific model, but a seven foot or seven two to seven four foot, that's the length, medium heavy power. This is your workhorse. This is your do almost everything power fishing. Besides big swim baits and punching and frogging, most of your techniques can be fished on this right here. So that's my number two recommendation. Get that spinning rod and then get a bait caster. If you're not familiar with bait casters or comfortable, I'll, I'll give you another spinning rod. But this guy right here, this is your Texas rig rod. This is your light flipping rod. Throw in jigs, throw in spinner baits, chatter baits, top waters. You could even crank on it if you want. It's not ideal with that, uh, with that faster uh, action. But that medium heavy power is hands down the most universal power for most fishing techniques. When you go into a tackle shop or you're shopping online and you're looking at all these different techniques, this rod in that range, that size, and this power can throw and, and do most of those techniques. That is my bread and butter rod. Now this right here, this is an NRX Plus. That is a very uh, high-end rod, 
but again, you can do so many different things on it. And down below in the video description, I'll link some different budget combos, um, budget rods for you. But that is, I mean, that's your 4.8 Kitex. That's your 4.3 Kitex. That's your light A rigs. I mean, you name it, you can basically throw it on here. Your scrounger heads, your bigger Texas rigs, your bigger shaky heads, uh, your jigs, all of it can be done on that rod right there. Now, we got two. Now, if you're a guy, you know, these, these, these videos are always fun to do because it all depends on the different types of fish you're fishing for and the lakes you're fishing. You know, you might not need, you, you probably will need it, because even if it's a crystal clear smallmouth fishery, you're gonna need some kind of uh, medium heavy power rod for throwing your swim baits and, and jigs and such. But say you are a fisherman that primarily wants to finesse fish, light line. We already have that medium, now we, spinning rod, now we have that medium heavy bait caster. The next rod that I wanna recommend to you guys is some kind of medium light power spinning rod. You know, something that will allow you to fish those lighter techniques. You know, your, your exposed hook drop shot. Maybe you're throwing a four pound uh, leader line with a number two mosquito light hook and you're throwing a little flat worm or a smallie smasher and you're fishing ultra clear water and you need some light line, some light tackle. This rod is gonna be money for you. This is a medium light. Okay, so this is gonna be your Ned Rigs. How's it going, guys? It's gonna be your Ned Rigs. It's gonna be your light drop shots. You can throw your 2.8 Kitex on your underspin. This is perfect. You can throw a spy bait. You could actually throw uh, a soft plastic or a jerk bait, a traditional jerk bait on this. If you throw like a, a Vision 110 plus one or two, you can maybe go to that heavier spinning rod but this guy right here is gonna fulfill all of your needs for your light finesse stuff, even hair jigs. So now you have three rods. You can throw your light hair jigs all the way up to your 5 8 ounce, you know, half ounce or a little bit heavier jigs, swim bait heads. So you are covered in all of those different techniques. Okay. From there, those are the top three. Plain and simple, those are the top three. Now, where do you go from there? This guy right here is a medium power. So we talked about medium heavy, now we're talking medium. Basically the same power in a casting rod that we talked about in the spinning. So if you want to be throwing a shaky head, and then you also want to be throwing a top water or a blade bait or something lighter in that reaction bait category. Six foot 10 to seven foot medium power, fast action, extra fast action. Um, but that medium power is what is critical. Uh, this is gonna be the rod I'm gonna recommend. Uh, it's again, it's that do everything. You know, that medium heavy is gonna take care of that heavier stuff. This is gonna be your lighter power fishing stuff. So your lighter spinner baits, your lighter underspins, your lighter finesse swim baits. So say you wanna be throwing a, a 2.8 Kitek on this guy right here, but then you wanna be throwing a 3.8 on a three ounce, ounce head. This is gonna be your rods. This is gonna be your second bait caster. So you have that medium heavy, that do all universal rod, and then a step down in power to a medium. That guy right there is a must. So for me, this is all opinion. You know, Matt and I went back and forth on this video last year. Um, so I've included two rods, but this next rod for me, it's going to be the fifth rod in this lineup. So we have a seven foot medium spinning. We have a seven foot to seven four medium heavy casting. Those are your two do all rods. Then if you're, you need a rod to go light, go with that 610 to seven foot medium light power. And then the bait caster, seven foot, I mean, you can even go 610, 610 to seven, you can even go to seven two 
medium power bait caster. That will throw probably, I don't know, 85% of the baits um, day in and day out on the market. I mean, you can throw a lot of baits on those four rides, rods right there. But the type of fishing I like to do, I like to have one rod where I'm throwing a heavy power. We talked about medium heavy, your universal stuff. This is gonna be another kind of technique specific esque rod, a heavy. So seven foot to seven six heavy power. This is gonna be a rod that you can throw frogs on. You can throw buzz baits on. You can really power fish. You could do light punching, right? You find a mat, take a half ounce or three quarter ounce tungsten. You could do light tungsten, straight braid, 200 size reel. You can get those fish out of there. A heavy power rod. Huh. You can throw some bigger glide baits on there. If you do go with a little bit slower action than an extra fast, maybe a fast or a moderate fast, but this is gonna allow you to throw bigger baits and fish into thicker cover. You know, out here on Chickamauga, say you're out here throwing a 10 inch uh, worm on a shaky head, but you're fishing for big fish, I'm gonna go with the heavy versus the medium heavy. So that is my number five. But Matt brought up a really good point last year. And again, just like I kind of changed up the medium light and the medium spinning, it all depends on you and the type of fishing you're doing. So if you're not doing some of the heavier stuff and you're not doing frog fishing, you know, maybe you're not, maybe you're not throwing horny toads or hollow body frogs. Maybe you want to throw a crankbait or maybe you're a guy that likes to throw a chatterbait or a bladed jig on a more moderate fast action. I'm going to show you guys this too. In the very beginning, I talked about action, rod tips, right? I'm going to pull down on this. See where that rod is bending, right? This is a crank rod. It is basically bending to my hand right here, just with that little, little pressure on the tip. That is your action. That is what um, allows those fish to come up and jump, especially on your treble hook baits and your top water baits, jump without that rod unloading real quick and leaving slack in your line for them to spit hooks. With that rod staying bowed, it's a slower action, right? It doesn't unload as quick as like a faster and extra fast tip. It's gonna leave that bow in your rod and it's gonna leave that pressure on those hook points so those fish can't spit the bait as easily. So with that said, number six is going to be some kind of crank rod. You know, a rod like a, a seven foot to a seven foot six medium to medium heavy crankbait rod is going to allow you to throw square bills, chatter baits, uh, deep crankbaits, you know, down to like 20 foot. You could throw a DT20 on here, DT16, the tactical DD crank. You can throw that on this crank right, rod right here. You're not gonna be able to throw you're not gonna be able to, th to throw the, the Magnum cranks. That's gonna be more of a technique specific rod. This is another universal do all rod. So if you're a guy that doesn't necessarily need to be frogging and flipping and punching, but you want to be throwing a square bill or you wanna be throwing a rattle trap or a lipless crankbait, you know, an LV500, you, a, a deep crank, that will be your next purchase. So guys, Hopefully this helps. Hopefully you understand, you know, the action versus power and where they are applied to the different techniques out there. You know, um, fishing can be overwhelming, but it can be extremely simple if you want it to be. So down below in the video description, I will link these rods and, and the different rods uh, at the different price points, depending on who you are and how much money you want to spend. Um, we'll do budget friendly and we'll do high end and, and somewhere in the middle. But these five or six rods are rods that doesn't matter if you're a seasoned angler or a, a beginner fisherman. These are rods that you either already have 
or need to have somewhere in your arsenal to get you through a day of fishing. Um, you know, these are, it, it's, it's fun doing this video because there's so many different, um, I mean, you take a, a rod line like the G Loomis IMX Pro, or you take a, a rod line like, um, you know, let's say St. Croix, they have so many different technique specific rods. I think the St. Croix rod lineup has 26 technique specific. I mean, IMX Pro's right up there too. So many different little crankbait rods, little niche rods, little jerkbait rods. So it can be extremely overwhelming, but these five or six rods are great universal rods and will allow you to do 80 to 90% of all the techniques on the market with these guys right here. Guys, if you have questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. Matt and I will try to get to those as soon as possible. And then again, down below in the video description, I will link all of these rods, different price points, different techniques that I think you guys uh, hopefully will apply these to your fishing. And then don't forget about that discount code, $20 off your next $100 purchase. Super cool. Uh, it lasts for one week. That'll be the top link down below in the video description. When you click on it, that discount will automatically be applied to your transaction over $100. Super cool. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, again, down below in the comment section, leave those. If you like this type of video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.